called The Call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a pretty fascinating story because you worked with the director here on TV first, right? Yeah. So I read for this guest star part on Fringe, not thinking I would get it. But then lucky enough, which is half this business is, you know, there is luck to it. Uh, I got a very cool director named Brad Anderson who directed movies you might have heard of, like The Machinist with Christian Bale or uh, Session 9, which is a cool movie. Um, and he directed this episode of Fringe and saw my audition and fought for me where, you know, 12 other, you know, studio executives didn't want me. They wanted uh, to hire an American, which is usually what happens or sometimes is what happens. But this one director wanted me for the role and he got his way this one time and I ended up playing the role in Fringe which led to a relationship that I maintained with the director over the years which led to him directing a film called The Call with Halle Berry and um, yeah we stayed in touch when it came time to make the movie he asked me to put something on tape you know to show these 10 producers on this film when the director asked me to do a tape, you know, you could normally go in front of a wall, a blue wall, or, you know, and have a friend be the reader on the other side of the camera and, and do the, the lines, you know, and I thought, well, that's not going to show enough to these 10 other producers who don't know who I am uh, that I, I, I would really like to play this role and what I would bring to it. So what I did was I felt very inspired and um, I went out and filmed an audition from scratch where I built the props. I, I you know, bought the wardrobe. I went out and bought a camera and a, and a microphone and lighting equipment and I shot it like a little mini, um, little mini short film kind of. And uh, I went out and found a, the, 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 the seediest dirtiest motel room you could probably find in, in Vancouver and spent the night there and all by myself with my dog and um, filmed myself living as the character for one night and just filmed you know different things that he would be doing and then got a couple friends to do some of the acting scenes with me and went on location and shot some of these scenes and then took the, the, the footage to an editor he cut it together put music to it color corrected it and made this beautiful little piece and we sent that into the studio. And the director, uh, my agent, told me not to send it. She thought it would scare them off and that it was very different than what you normally do when you audition for a movie or a TV show. And I said, no, I, I worked hard on this. Send it. What, what do I have to lose? You know, the worst thing that could happen is I don't get the role. But uh, so I convinced her to send it. And... Um, I ended up getting the role. I would also say I don't do that every time. I don't do that on every audition I get. Um, you save it for the ones that you really want or the ones that you really want to fight for and the ones that you feel inspired to get because uh, a lot of this job is based on inspiration. And when you have that fire inside of you, that inspiration, then act on it. We all have more pain than we have happiness. And so use it, you know use that pain that you have in your life or that you're hiding in your life and put it into your work. Um, when you do that, I have this theory that the audience, the, the, the viewers, will identify with what you're going through. Um, if you're hiding it, if you're always trying to be cool or trying to hide that you know, real element within life, then it doesn't translate well to the viewer. You know? And so instead of hiding my pain, I, I embrace it. You know, because I started in comedy in the beginning. That's all I was booking was comedic work. And then I got to a point where I wanted to do more serious work. And then it started going in that direction almost too much. So when Gunless came up, it was so nice just to, like, shake it off and just, you know, go and have fun and, you know, be comedic. But, again, with a lot of pain. But even in your comedy, always use, always use uh, you know, truth. You know. This guy was he? Was it the farmer? Yeah, I was the farmer on the tree I stump. I for that. Oh, did I you? Hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a callback too. Ah, but that's Who's another kids? thing. You got friends who are auditioning with you every day, and you see the same guys at the auditions, and whether I get it or Granger gets it or whoever, it doesn't matter. It's not about competition. This, this business is in a, a competitive business. It's a display of your work, mm -hmm. and that's what we do. He shows up to an audition. He displays what he has. I display what I got. 
they make a choice. It's not personal. Mm. You know, you don't go home and, and, and feel like you're a shitty actor or you shouldn't be doing this. You know, you're displaying your work. You can approach it like it's a competition and it'll eat you up. Mm -hmm. It will eat you up and you will get jealous and you'll get envious and it'll destroy you and you, you'll start to feel bad about yourself or love yourself and then that's a dangerous hole to go into too. Usually the scariest choice is the right one and because it's the strongest feeling and if you're feeling it on set when you're saying that dialogue and you're actually feeling those emotions, mm. it's truth, you know? And it's something that I've been exploring lately within my real life is how can you be an actor and go on set and tell the truth when you don't live your life in truth, right? And if you think about that, if you go about your life and you're lying to everyone within yourself, I'm not talking about major lies, I'm talking about little ones, you know? How is your, someone asks you, how's your day? And you go, oh, it's good, but really it's not, you know? You're lying. So start telling the truth. Know what telling the truth actually feels like in your real life because then you can go on set and know what telling the truth feels like in your work. If we run our lives not being in our own truth, how can we act in truth? It's gonna feel like lies in your real life and it's gonna feel like lies in your, in your work life. And you don't let anybody stop you, anybody. Your parents, uh, your teachers, your, your, your other people, your friends, nobody determines whether you should do this or not. It's up to you to do it. And I had so many people, like I was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan no work whatsoever. You told people that you wanted to be a movie actor and people laughed at you. I had girlfriends, parents telling me that, you know, it was a, a dream and get it real life and so many voices telling me that it wasn't possible. And the thing is, I just didn't believe anyone. Everybody, you know, has an opinion. None of them matter except yours because this is your job. This is your dream, your life, and it's your art. And there are no rules on art. The second anyone starts putting rules like it should, you know, it, there's only one way to, to do this, it's not true. You know, you create your universe, um, you create your path, and that is what it is to be an artist, is you're creating, you know. From whether it's a picture on a paper or a scene that you're doing, you're creating your own universe. That's how big your art is. You're creating it all, and it's all in your power to achieve it. It's just how you're going to do it. If you're getting into this for fame and for money, not probably the best reasons to get into this job. Get into this because you love doing it. Because every day you do it, whether you're being paid or not, you're going to love what you're doing. You know? And that's worth so much more than going to a job that pays you well that you hate.